Hello, this is our security update, which we often look at issues concerning security in the continent. With me, Hamza Dabcheri. Somalia Prime Minister says army forces will win war against Al Shabaab. Somalia and Atmis troop contributing countries agree on to draw down troops in Somalia. 47 arrested in Ethiopia following assassination of Abiy's political leader. Army insurgents killed 33 soldiers in fresh Burkina Faso assault. Welcome to the program. The Prime Minister of Somalia, Hamza Abdi Barre, reiterated his optimism that the National Army Forces will win during the war against Al Shabaab in central and southern Somalia. He said the government will succeed in its war against terrorism. The Prime Minister of Somalia, Hamza Abdi Barre, reiterated his optimism that the National Army Forces will win during the war against Al Shabaab in central and southern Somalia. He said the government will succeed in its war against terrorism. He underlined a lot has been achieved in the war, adding that the remaining Al Shabaab members will soon be eradicated by the army as the government works to repeal the country and complete the process of drafting a new constitution. The Prime Minister called it on Somali people to continue praying for the country and support the ongoing war against Al Shabaab, which the government recently revealed it is plan of the second phase for the anti Al Shabaab war. The federal government government parked by local militias claiming to have liberated more strategic villages and killed thousands of fighters from Al-Shabaab since the fight commenced last year. Heads of state and governments of troops contributing countries to the African Union transition mission in Somalia and the Federal Republic of Somalia agreed on the drawdown of troops in Somalia. The heads of state and governments of troops contributing countries to the African Union transition mission in Somalia and the Federal Republic of Somalia agreed on the drawdown of troops in Somalia. The meeting in Kampala was convened to follow the achievements made in the implementation of ATMIS mandate and the overall security situation in Somalia. The major component of the ATMIS mandate is to implement the Somalia Transition Plan, detailing the handover of security responsibilities from the ATMIS to the federal government by December 2024. ATMIS was commended for the successful implementation of its mandate, including supporting smooth political transitions, saving lives, and supporting stabilization efforts in Somalia. Likewise, troops contributing countries were commended and appreciated for their immense sacrifice in the fight against terrorism. Meanwhile, the heads of state underscored the importance of respecting the sovereignty, territorial integrity, political independence, and unity of Somalia while also reaffirming their commitment to assist the government in its stabilization efforts. The heads of state also recognized and lauded the efforts of the Somalia security forces in the fight against Al-Shabaab, and noted the need for increased logistical support to the country's security apparatus. They proposed the provision of force multipliers and enablers, especially aviation support to the security forces. The president of Uganda, Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, has expressed optimism that regional states could solve the Somalia prolonged conflicts anytime soon. He made the statement during the conclusion of the Atmis Troop Contributor Summit in Kampala. The president of Uganda, Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, has expressed optimism that regional states could solve the Somalia prolonged conflict anytime soon. He made the statement during the conclusion of the Atmis Troop Contributor Summit in Kampala. Museveni reminded the heads of the state that Africa has already solved similar conflicts referring to the Idi Amin era of Uganda which was solved in Tanzania and the Prudy conflict which was solved by East African communities and said that the problem of Somalia can also be solved anytime soon. The Ugandan troop was the first to deploy troops under army SOM into Somalia in March 2007 and remains the largest contingent troops is based in Sector 1, which comprises Panadi, Middle and Lower Shabele regions. Until now, Uganda has deployed 12 battle groups into the mission area. The recently deployed battle group 12 joined their Pundian counterparts in Paidoa. Ethiopian authorities announced on Sunday that 47 individuals have been apprehended in connection to the killing of a prominent figure in Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed's ruling party, claiming that the suspects had intended to overthrow the government, but 
We will be back after the short break. Making documentaries is one of the most creative craft and challenging endeavors you can be involved in. It is an effective strategy to inform, persuade, educate, defend perspective and shed light on various issues, policies and activities. At CBA TV, documentary production is our forte. We capture every TikTok detail of events in highest resolution to tell the story you care about, from politics to human hunger, research-based content, educative and informative. We also help you project your story in a dynamic perspective that attracts the world views of the target audience as there is no better or more powerful way to place the organization's values and achievements than to make an excellent documentary film. No doubt, our strength lies in these ventures and we pride in many award-winning documentaries which have been earning accolades across Africa and beyond let's tell your story welcome back again ethiopian authorities announced it on sunday that 47 individuals have been apprehended in connection to the killing of a prominent figure in prime minister abi ahmed's ruling party claiming that the suspects had intended to overthrow the government security forces have apprehended 47 individuals for suspected involvement in terrorism and these individuals have been found with weapons, bombs and satellite communications equipment according to the statement released by EBC. The security forces in their statement said the suspects worked together locally and in foreign countries with the aim of taking control of the regional government in order to overthrow the federal government by assassinating senior Amhara officials. The statement indicated that extremist forces were responsible for the killing of Mr. Girma without providing details on when the arrests were made. Girma Yeshetila, the head of the Welfare Party in the recently tumultuous Amhara region, was assassinated alongside four other people during an assault on Thursday. Mr. Girma, a member of the executive committee of the 45-person Prosperity Party, was often attacked on social media by Amhara nationalists who labelled him as a traitor due to his closeness to Mr. Abi. The Amhara regional government reported that irregular forces attacked the cars in which Mr. Girma, his security guards and family were travelling while they were en route to Debri Berhan, a large city in the region, roughly 100 km northeast of Addis Ababa. The federal government of Ethiopia in April this year sought to dismantle the Amhara region's special forces, which were illegal paramilitary units set up by the Amhara authorities, as well as several other regions' authorities over the past 15 years. This caused several days of armed unrest in the region, and the anger was further exacerbated due to the fact that the Amhara special forces and the FANU, local self-defense militias, had offered crucial assistance to the Federal Army during their conflicts with the authorities of Tigray, which had initiated the rebellion against Addis Ababa in November 2020. The Somalia Army Forces confirmed the death of Sigisti al Shabaab fighters who were killed in an operation carried out by the government forces in Ali Qabobi area, approximately 30 kilometers south of Haradere town in Muduk region. The Somalia Armed Forces confirmed the death of Sigisti al Shabaab fighters who were killed in an operation carried out by the government forces in Ali Qabobi area, approximately 30 kilometers south of Haradere town in Mudug region. The Haradere District Commission has said the military forces received information about a car carrying weapons and al Shabaab members in the village, prompting the operation that led the government to apprehend their weapons and two vehicles. In January, the government forces backed by local militia captured the strategic town of Haradere in the Muduk region, which had been under Al Shabaab control for over a decade. Since the start of the offensive, the government forces have pushed back Al Shabaab fighters from dozens of population centers with the support of local clan militia forces. Officers of Somalia National Army Forces claim to have destroyed Al Shabaab hideouts in Mid Al Shabele region during a military operation carried out by the government forces in the last hours. 
Officers of Somalia National Army Forces claim it to have destroyed Al Shabaab hideouts in Mid Al Shabaab region during a military operation carried out by the government forces in the last hours. The operation is, according to the official, is conducted check up around its targeting vehicles and houses in the newly liberated areas to ensure the Al Shabaab fighters don't resume attacks in the areas. The federal government of Somalia said it has continued to build capacity of the country's military through training and equipment to enable it better protect Somali citizens and state institutions and also expand governmental authority. In central Somalia, federal troops supported by local fighters have been slowly seizing territories from Al-Shabaab. Burkina Faso has reported yet another attack on its military as 33 soldiers were killed by armed insurgents, while several others injured. This is the latest in a series of attacks on the military by armed men in the country that has witnessed two coups. The Burkina Bay Army said on Friday that a large group of extremist insurgents attacked the military in the country's east, killing 33 soldiers and injuring a dozen more. According to an army statement, the assault occurred in the Guma province town of Waugaru. The latest attack is coming barely some weeks after gunmen killed at least 40 members of Burkina Faso's security forces and wounded dozens of others in the northern part of the West African country. For seven years, fighters linked to extremist groups have waged a violent insurgency in Burkina Faso. Thousands of people have been killed and approximately 2 million have been displaced as a result of the violence. It has also divided an otherwise peaceful country and fueled the frustration that led to two coups last year. Captain Ibrahim Trahore, the new junta leader, has promised to secure the country. However, some civilians say they are also afraid of Burkina Faso security forces whom they accuse of extrajudicial killings and disappearance of an unknown number of others suspected of supporting the militants. Kamel Sadiq, CBA TV. And with that story of Burkina Faso reported yet another attack on this military as 33 soldiers were killed by army insurgents while several others injured. We'll wrap up our program for this time. Thank you very much for being with us. This is me, Hamza Dabjerin.